Welcome to our newest episode of Ideas Fulfilled by Printful Enterprise. So it seems like every company out there these days want to do merchandise, whether they're an apparel company or they're producing food or they're a content creator. So how do you get started, especially if you're a big company that has a bulky production process? That's why we've invited Christoph Smiltans, Head of Enterprise Solutions at Printful, to talk to us about on-demand manufacturing and manufacturing in general. So let's get started. Hi, Christoph. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. So I read your title. It's quite a lengthy one. It's Head of Enterprise Solutions Supplier Services. What does it mean? What do you actually do? Yeah, it's, it's quite long and I have uh, trouble remembering <laughs> the exact, the exact uh, position name. But uh, yeah, in a nutshell, we uh, focus on uh, the biggest players in the e-commerce industry and uh, try to offer Printful services as a supplier. For those of our listeners who don't exactly know perhaps what Printful does, what are the services that we can offer? We're on white label print-on-demand dropshipping partner so if anyone anyone wants to have uh, print on demand do it at scale do it globally uh supposedly we're the right partner for them and uh, what are some of the brands that you work with right now if you can mention them yeah this is a good question uh, so as i mentioned before and Generally, we're a white label partner, so that means usually our biggest customers are quite sensitive to the fact of mentioning that we are providing the services, we are providing the t-shirts on their behalf to their end yeah. customer. So and in most of the cases, we can't mention the names, but there are some who have agreed on that. So it's uh, Paramount, Warner Brothers, um, NBC, Universal uh, from the entertainment space, and there's some consumer brands brands like Coca-Cola, Dunkin' Donuts. There are many more. There are a lot of players from the music industry, from the gaming industry. So uh, yeah, we're, we're having a quite, uh, quite a fun time uh, working with the, you know, the biggest companies that uh, comes to everyone's everyone's mind when you're mentioning you know a big company. And I know that Printful recently acquired Snow Commerce that you have to work quite closely with as well. Can you tell us a little bit about Snow Commerce? Yeah, so Snow Commerce is a company that uh, offers full service e-commerce solutions. So in a majority of cases, if you're a big brand like an entertainment or music or even consumer goods, and you don't really want to hire a full stack of e-commerce team and specialists and do a lot of uh, salaries and everything you can just go to snow commerce and they will do everything on your behalf create a great d2c store uh, work on your customer experience customer journey everything so uh, yeah the sites are beautiful the solutions are beautiful they have insane capabilities in design and tech so uh, yeah and uh, we're, we're we're in most cases we are uh, the ones who are providing the product in terms of uh, manufacturing printing or embroidery and uh, for shipping to the end customer so what sort of companies actually use print on demand? Is it clothing brands? What industries are they from? Like the first thought that came to my mind is that everyone uses print on demand, uh, but it's probably uh, uh, n not entirely correct to, to make a statement like that. But yeah, it's it's all over the place. Like you can imagine uh, actual big clothing brands you can act you can mention small micro brands like mom and pop stores who sell t-shirts uh, you can imagine uh, big entertainment brands you can imagine uh, the music industry right uh, band t-shirts and, and stuff like that there's it's all over the place it offers a solution for multiple uh needs mm -hmm. so uh in in a case where you don't know exactly what what items are going to sell and uh, how much of them are going to sell it just eases the process and it's and it's e it's equally interesting for small businesses as well as large companies because everyone faces the same problems right if you're a small company maybe you don't have the assets to invest you physically don't have them but if you're a big company you have to prioritize where to invest and then it's you know a game of, of a decision whether you invest in inventory or you go on demand and in uh, most cases it's a combination of both when we're talking about larger enterprise level companies. On the band in general, it's quite a new industry, I think. Do you feel that the attitude towards it is changing? Because I think like some even five years ago when you approached people and saying, hey, we're a print on demand company, they were a little bit skeptical perhaps. Has that changed? Yeah, definitely it has changed. Uh, like five years ago when I started at Printful, there were a lot of a uh, lot of big companies that didn't even know that it existed. They didn't understand the concept. Obviously, the biggest players knew that it's out there, but they had major concerns with quality. Right now, 
let's say we have narrowed the gap between uh, on-demand manufacturing and traditional bulk manufacturing in terms of quality, um, as well as the uh, offering and the capabilities. Um, yeah, so generally as the technology improves, like the printing technology and all of that, the quality improves, uh, the capabilities improve, you can now do a lot, a lot more of customization. And uh, yeah, that helps. So it, it has grown a lot, definitely in the last five years and probably it will continue to grow uh, as the technology and the capabilities improve. How about print-on-demand during the pandemic? How did that whole period change how people are viewing print-on-demand? Print-on-demand jumped on the bandwagon of e-commerce growth in general. People were uh, looking for ways how to how to monetize and how to actually sell products when they actually can't do that physically. It also comes together with the fact that assets were frozen into inventory uh, with you know big brands. We heard that uh, H&M experiencing trouble. It's like $4 billion of dollars frozen into inventory and that obviously made a lot of people think, hey, maybe we don't need to put all eggs in one basket. Maybe we need to diversify a little bit because if something like this hits again, at least we're not losing that money and we're not be able to sell out those assets with all the retail stores closed. And e-commerce doesn't have the infrastructure underneath it to sell that inventory out. At least it didn't have at that point. So... Yeah, definitely. It has experienced some growth, it has experienced some popularity. But again, it comes together with all the technological improvement and the fact that, you know, five years ago when you said print on demand and you probably first thing you thought was, you know, uh, cheap and uh, not not entirely good quality T-shirt that you can buy in some kind of uh, weird marketplace with weird designs right now, perhaps even like high-end fashion brands are doing print-on-demand or direct-to-garment printing. So yeah, that, that has, has seemingly opened uh, people's eyes. I assume that you don't go to the large companies and say, drop bulk ordering altogether, let's just do print-on-demand. You mentioned diversifying assets. So what does it exactly mean? Yeah, uh, I, w- I would certainly love to do that if, <laughs> if somebody would, uh, uh, some large company would just decide, hey, um, we're not doing inventory anymore and we're doing on-demand. But in reality, if a company's main business is selling, let's say, apparel, right? They most likely have a lot of people working on that. They have people who plan inventory. They have people who design products, who uh, purchase products, who like there's a whole beast underneath, right? So it's not that easy to tell those people that, hey, guys, you've been doing all of this wrong and you, you just can't continued working like this and you have to go on demand so in most cases we find a let's say a pain that there's something there's some particular projects that are not going through as they plan there's some items that are not selling as well as they could or they're interested in testing something out that they're not sure if they can get the resources to invest in inventory and they want to check it out and then print on demand is a perfect entry point because you can test out for example like phone cases that's a that's a silly example, but uh, actually, if you uh, look at what phones people are using, everyone probably has a different model and every model has a different case. And if you have a single design on that phone case and you want to go inventory, then how much will you order from for each you know, phone variant? So that's pretty unmanageable. And then you have probably you'll end up even after a very successful sales process, you'll end up with some kind of excess inventory that has to be written off. So if it if you go with on demand, it's risk free. To summarize, we try to get the foot in the door uh, to see whether they like the process, whether they're um, all good with how quickly things are fulfilled, what's the product quality and everything. And then we try to expand from there because, uh, yeah, the opportunities are quite wide with Printful, as I mentioned in the beginning of the discussion. And uh, you mentioned that you're sort of uh, the way to get the foot in the door is to find the pains that the big companies currently have regarding merchandise. One thing you mentioned is that they want to experiment a little bit, but did not want to invest. What are some of the other pain points that on-demand manufacturing helped them uh, deal with? There's a number of them, uh, at least theoretically. Uh, Definitely time to market. Mm -hmm. So if you imagine your favorite artist, whoever that might be, if you go on their website to buy merchandise, it's usually some kind of pre-order or something like that. And obviously this is being done so that the company who is actually providing the merchandise, they have the time to source it. They can actually test the demand. They can understand, okay, I will have to make an order this big because the first week they're just collecting the orders. So 
it's sort of done from this sense, but then you as a consumer, as a fan, you'll only get the shirt or, or your product two months after you yeah. made your purchase. And then it's like if your favorite artist comes out with a single of the summer and you get all, get the shirt only in September, it's like, oh, yeah, cool. I ordered this. Okay, maybe I'll wear it to the next concert I attend you know, sometime in the winter, but it sort of like decreases the level of satisfaction probably with the fans, same everywhere, like with, you know, even when in fashion, like if some new trend appears, it's very hard to capitalize on that trend because the time to market is, it's quite wide compared to print on demand, where it's just putting the product up and the full fulfillment delivery in the United States, you can maybe even receive it in the same week. So let's imagine I'm a company that does apparel and I want to start using on-demand manufacturing how how does the process look like where do we start yeah well first of all we we would have a chat uh, to understand why are you uh, trying to explore on demand so is it inventory is it time to market is it the fact that you have been testing on demand and you're burnt yourself previously or is it you want to expand globally so we try to uh, understand what are the needs, manage expectations in terms of quality. If you're transferring from inventory, let's say bulk production to print on demand, there will be differences both in capabilities and actually the execution. As I said, the technology has improved in the last couple of years to narrow that gap, but there still is a gap. There's still customers who are very picky. There are customers who are less picky. So we need to understand the balance there. Usually we start small, right? We start with a small pilot, test out a couple of uh, products, how are they doing so that everyone can have the data and then uh yeah we see how we see how where this takes us and hopefully uh to a very fruitful and successful partnership uh, you mentioned the quality gap a little bit and I, I know that the technologies have improved but what are some of the issues still with print on demand quality up until recently it was the one of the one of the big ones was the smell so we uh sort of are, are addressing that also with new uh, technology improvements so your t-shirt doesn't smell like vinegar or something and it doesn't have stains on it from the pre-treat there's all, obviously also some uh color vibrancy deviances from the from the you know, product image you see on the laptop screen or your computer screen when you're or phone screen, and actually majority of cases when you're ordering it and how it translates on the actual product because there, it's a little bit different. Although, like within Printful and props to Printful team, uh, our, our UX team, a graphics team that they have implemented a solution that actually tries to capture that difference already into that mock-up, so partner can manage the expectations with their end consumers that mm. this will look like this and won't be you know neon bright colors and, and something that glows in the dark, but uh, it will actually look as close as possible to the actual finished product. So that's one. Uh, maybe in some cases, some uh, weird print locations. Printful is set up to be able to fulfill a single order and to be able to fulfill 10,000 orders and it doesn't matter and you don't need to predict anything and for that to happen we have to have some operational limitations so we can scale very easily and it doesn't bottleneck our operations and you don't have a big queue and orders are late so that's why we have a standardized print area uh, strategy right we have front back sleeves inside labels outside labels stuff like that but if a customer wants to have uh, let's say a um, a uh, small soon on uh, hem tag on the bottom of the t-shirt or on the sleeve that's something that we currently can't do but uh well we're always open into exploring these opportunities and there are situations where we've been where we have leapt into directions that were totally different than we expected when our new product development team uh, created their plan late last year uh yeah we actually closed some some deals uh, this year that that are quite large velocity and uh yeah we're doing something that we have not done any time before but yeah that's 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 the beauty of it if it's the right partner and everything fits uh then uh we can do a lot of things because also as as probably most of the viewers know or listeners sorry uh, everyone who's listening on spotify Printful does both the software and production so if we run the production we have pretty much full control over the process and if there is a uh, business area we can expand into and there's a, a solidified business case we can explore those opportunities Maybe. for sure what are some of the perhaps um, innovations in on-demand manufacturing in the latest years that you have found more 
most exciting. An interesting topic, which is uh, uh, it has some resonance in the in the whole industry of, of, of manufacturing, merchant industry, or, or call it whatever you like, apparel industry, is uh, this direct to film mm. printing. It has been here for a while, but now it's uh, a little bit developed a little bit more, and it has its advantages over direct to garment. I don't know yet which one will win the war because it's uh, it has come to a, a point where there are customers who want direct to film instead of direct to garment can you tell a little bit about the difference between the direct to garment versus direct to film yeah so direct to garment is uh as, as uh mentioned in some of our uh, promotional videos as well uh is Literally, you can imagine the process as your office printer or a regular printer. You insert a page or in this uh, in this instance, you insert a T-shirt or any kind of other blank product and you print directly on top of the T-shirt. But direct to film is basically you print a film, then you apply it on the garment and you heat press it on. So it's uh, it delivers a lot better color vibrancy and a lot more photorealistic prints. So you, you, you can't like... If you look at the image on our computer screen and image that is actually printed on the product, it looks almost the same. The problem with direct film right now is that the feel is still a little bit mm, plastic. How do you call it? Like rubbery plastic. It's a little bit shiny in, in, in uh, bright light. So uh, the feel is not ideal. Then again, if you design particularly to manage that, effect defect and turn it into effect it can work for some customers so that's why some are actually requesting it some are staying away from it because they say that no no no, our customers won't like it we want we want dtg because it's closer to screen print like everyone wants screen print on demand that would be like a perfect solution right but unfortunately we don't have the ability to do that just yet who knows perhaps in five years or so there's going to be screen printing on demand yeah uh, what about embroidery? I know that that's getting more and more popular. Yeah, definitely. Embroidery is a cool thing, cool technique, uh, especially right now with the color reel technology, which allows you to uh, pretty much expand into any color that you want on the hat. And uh, you, you don't need to change the threads in the machine as well. So if you want Lakers gold or Lakers purple, you don't need to switch uh, the threads in the machine. And when you're printing for, uh, you know, Orlando Magic, for example. It dyes the thread during the process and uh, allows operations to work a lot more seamlessly, have a bigger capacity to fulfill the products quicker. So that is uh, a very interesting one. And on top of that, it allows you to do these weird color transitions with embroidery, which which have I at least hadn't seen before, unless for products in that were fulfilled in Southeast Asia or somewhere where, where you know, uh, different innovations came out uh, in, in mysterious ways right and nobody knew how they did it uh but yeah this is uh, this is a cool new uh feature that allows you to uh, take advantage of embroidery what about the cost efficiency of print on demand because i think at least for large companies that's usually a pretty sensitive topic is it more expensive to run a print on demand business or are there is it not that expensive anymore depends uh from how you look at it so if you compare cost per unit, if you're doing bulk and let's say, and it's also like it varies quite widely, right? If you're doing 100 units or you're doing 10,000 units. So if you compare, let's say, uh, a unit price for a 10,000 unit bulk order with a print on demand unit price, the difference is uh, quite, quite big. And from that perspective, yeah, it's more more uh, expensive. But if you look at look at from the perspective of okay, if let's say theoretically I can order ten thousand t-shirts and pay four dollars or whatever below four dollars for unit, mm -hmm. and then print on demand comes in and they ask you like nine dollars for the t-shirt. The difference is you don't have to invest forty thousand dollars up front plus warehousing plus employees who will fulfill that and everything. Even if you're even if you're using a 3PL, whatever, you're still investing those 40 grand into inventory in hope that you're going to sell out all of those 10,000 units. With on demand, you create a product and you invest those 40 grand into something else in marketing activities, creative things, in uh, social networks, and in, in whatever to build the brand and to drive demand from there. Th there's probably not a universal answer which one is better because they're, they're uh, you know, well, any, every company is different and every case is different. And Every consumer is different. So 
I would presume that in some cases you can actually make more from selling more on demand items because you know, obviously they cost more, but you just sell, you know, twice as much and you're generating pretty much the same you know, net profit at the end of the day. So there might very realistically be scenarios like that. The trouble with enterprise level companies, as I said, they're u- usually there's already a foundation of people who are working on that. So they can't really, you know, magically make the fixed costs disappear. That's what we're working with. And that's what we're uh, trying to uh, achieve here. And uh, not necessarily to, to prove that uh, you don't need all of this team, but that this team can be probably utilized in much more creative actions. Yeah, probably less less monkey jobs and more creative yep. side and marketing and whatever it is that you actually need to do to get those t-shirts out of the door. You also mentioned that Printful, it doesn't matter whether we fulfill one t-shirt or 10,000 t-shirts. How, how does it work? How, how is it possible to get that kind of scalability and how, how does it benefit the big companies? Yeah, this probably uh, would be a question that I could address to our chief uh, operations officer uh, but uh, yeah they're doing a great job that's 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 probably the best answer uh, we have an incredible team of um, operations and that uh, we have uh, quite a few facilities around the world so uh, we can mitigate those uh, risks of of having um, large spikes of volume quite quickly. Obviously, when we're working with uh, these enterprise level uh, partners, we try to work for uh, a projection and to ask Mm -hmm. for projections so that we're all prepared. Because at the end of the day, everyone benefits from that, that we know that, you know, in two weeks, I'm going to launch this this campaign and it probably will have a lot of traffic and there might be a lot of volume behind it. So we can actually stock up with inventory or ourselves. Uh, we can understand how many shifts we need in our operations facilities uh, for, for employees, and we can have all the machines running and everything so that we can clear all of that volume smoothly. And that's pretty much what we do every year uh, come uh, fourth quarter, right? So uh, Black Friday, Cyber Monday is coming up. Yeah, yeah. The most uh, wonderful time of the <laughs> year. So yeah, uh, we're, we're doing that. And uh, yeah, we're actually being quite successful the last uh yeah the last i i can't even uh, remember which fourth quarter we had a significant delay in like overall average lead times we're pretty pandemic good. probably because pandemic, that was just exactly. difficult yeah but we actually cleared up all the bottleneck before the fourth quarter and if we took only the uh, let's say the the q4 of 2020 i think it was pretty good it was still somewhere around four business days on average to fulfill a product which is pretty neat considering you know there were still quite quite significant supply chain issues all around the world you mentioned four business days and that's during like a rougher period rougher, of time for, yeah. the roughest period in the century right yeah exactly but uh, how is it still a concern for customers that that consumers in general they want to receive everything right now like there's uh, people who get they order a t-shirt from amazon they're they're gonna get it the next day basically is that something that uh enterprise customers are concerned about that there's too much of a lead time of course everyone is uh everyone is looking to get everything uh you know the cheapest the quickest the the best quality so uh obviously uh uh, the sooner we can get the product in the hands of the end customer, the better. Uh, yes, Amazon ha- is is quite uh, competitive in this in this space, and uh, yeah, they can actually deliver insanely quickly. But that being said, like when it when it comes to D to C, I, I, in not all cases, the end consumer is expecting the same from a D to C brand as they expect from Amazon. So you go into Amazon because you expect that they're going to deliver quick. If you go into your favorite boutique store online, you know that you know you like the store, you like the content, you're willing to wait for a couple of days. That is true. Literally yeah. waited for a water bottle for two weeks, and I wasn't even mad. I knew I had. I'll have to wait. Yeah. So it's about communicating with the customer that we'll do this, but this will take you know, this much of of this amount of time Mm. to to actually get this product into your hands. So if that's being done before the customer even makes the purchase, and in most cases, our uh, partners are are really, uh, uh, yeah, upfront and transparent about that, it, it doesn't cause that many issues or problems. And uh, how does the sustainability aspect come into it? Are, are, are enterprise companies now more interested in the 
well, I, I hesitate to call it a selling point that like everything is made on demand, so there's no overstock, but is it something they're more aware of now? Because I know that consumers are, they expect some sort of sustainability efforts from the companies. Yes, definitely. And this is also an interesting topic because I read that in every e-commerce uh, newsletter that's out there that system yeah. sustainability is super important everyone every gen zer is looking for brands that are sustainable and uh, do less harm to the environment and the planet in general however uh the price point for these products is quite steep um, not even for print on demand but for products in general even if you would do a sustainably sourced or produced blank it's higher, much higher than a regular T-shirt blank or not even mentioning some more complicated products like hoodies or whatnot. The price point is pretty high. Everyone, everyone from the enterprise industry is asking about, hey, do you have eco or you have environmentally friendly or you have sustainable products? Yes, we have. But when we actually put the price point in front of them, they're like, oh, nice. <laughs> That's great. We'll, we'll, we'll consider this. And it actually, it goes, it, it, it's not only, it's not only us, it's in general, like if you source them elsewhere, they're also going to be more expensive. And when it, the more parties are involved in the whole process, for example, if Printful is the manufacturer and we're working with a, an agency or a platform that has other users who will then sell to end customers, it's like three parties, four parties involved. Everyone wants to make a penny out of it. And uh, that retail price point becomes quite high so like the main uh, thought here is that once gen z actually uh, unlocks more purchasing power as they get older mm -hmm. and start earning more money for example like right now they're probably still young and you know just in the beginning of their professional careers at least most of them at that point, probably this will take off a lot quicker. And maybe at that point, the uh, su supply costs for the products also will come down a bit and we'll meet in the mid middle. But uh, right now, it's a, a powerful statement right now to say, but I think it's right now just a buzzword that everyone wants to use. Yeah. But uh, in reality, it, yeah, it's, it's, it's... Too many difficulties it's, still. Yeah, still, still quite pricey, which is in general terms the, the biggest difficulty because you just can't sell a product at that price if the you know comp competition sells something similar at you know half the well, cost i guess that's the benefit of on-demand manufacturing then again that you can test whether people are already ready to buy products at that price point without investing perhaps that much into them yes definitely and there's also like there's sort of I, i've heard this around it looks sort of like a moral di dilemma that print on demand is actually catering to the fast fashion industry and all the apparel waste because with cheap costs and people are buying stuff that they don't need at the same time you can look at it from a point that you're actually producing only the things that are actually bought yeah. right you don't have leftovers mm -hmm. so it automatically decreases the inefficiency of the supply chain so from one point of view yes we might be catering to uh, your spontaneous needs or demands for that particular t-shirt which you know has your quote from your favorite tv series uh, at the same time Yes, you would you would probably buy the item anyway, whether it's on demand or uh, inventory based. And if it's on demand, we don't produce any uh, leftovers. Yeah, that is a big benefit. I agree. So thinking about the future, what are some of the things that you are most excited about, whether it's in e-commerce in general or in the print on demand industry? I think it's uh, I think it's going to be uh, quite exciting, especially in on demand, because uh, I, I actually had a laugh uh, with my with my friend a while ago. And uh, we, we were uh, uh, laughing about the print on demand as a perfect perfect industry to be in because it will be always in demand whether the economy is great or bad yeah. because if it's great nobody can keep up with the supply chain and okay let's do on demand if it's bad okay we don't want to invest in inventory let's go on demand so it's in a perfect spot from that sense um 
I also think that there's going to be quite an exciting time in terms of all of these, uh, all those AI solutions that come out there and what's already happening. There's one particular uh, retailer that uh, we cannot name due to their uh, 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 questionable uh, supply chain sourcing options and everything, but they're doing an insane job uh, in a sense that they are offering very highly personalized content and not in a, not in a sense that they're just selling t-shirts with personalized designs mm-hmm. they're selling a product that can be built up from scratch with an order minimum of like eight units or something and it can be shipped out of china or wherever they ship them from uh, and it, it gets delivered in a couple of weeks so i know that like people are ordering stuff from there and shooting tiktok videos and then throwing the stuff out which obviously is you know it's it's not good but the fact that they can do that just shows how probably the fashion industry will move forward because why create something you know that everyone wears right so okay yeah there's always a situation where you see oh yeah that's a cool sweater or that's a cool dress for for ladies or or you know uh and you see yeah i would like to wear that or i I would like to wear what ryan gosling is or uh, margot robbie is wearing right insane i i want that yes there's always going to be a a market for that whether that's going to be print on demand or it's going to be more it's going to be like manufactured on demand or made on demand something like that will come into play Play and it, it, the industry will probably move into that direction. When you go into your favorite retailer brand, you will see an individualized offering just for you. And it's actually going to be individualized. It's not going to be based on the fact that you bought those shoes, you know, 70 other people bought these pants, right? It's going to be actually something for you based on your preferences. So that 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 is going to be a, a very interesting time to be in. We're probably going to spend a, a lot more money into stuff that gets worn hopefully more than once or or five times yeah hopefully Uh, do you think that these kinds of uh, new solutions in the e-commerce sphere are somehow gonna impact the brick and mortar stores are those gonna change to some extent as well this is again like i've read a number of theories how how brick and mortar is going to change so the most popular one right now is that they're going to be like a brand embassy right you go into your let's say you go into a nike like actually like the nike department store is like right now they're like entertainment centers right you go in there's screens flashy products there some sketches cool stuff so something like that obviously for each brand that resonates with the audience you can go to there you can meet people who also love the brand you can drink coffee or or do a running challenge or whatever in the store and then it's like yeah just pick up the stuff that you order online or do some kind of personalized unique experience in the brick and mortar stores so I've heard a theory that is going to happen and it's going to lean into this direction. But again, what will actually happen, we don't know. Like there are still tons of retail stores who are operating the regular way, the traditional way. And and, and I don't see that there are less people in them, especially after the pandemic. Okay, there was a spike probably because everyone was... uh, Tired of sitting at home. (laughs) Yeah, and they wanted to experience uh, normalcy again, right? So go into the store and and, then try something on. I think the first route does seem to be quite exciting, at least because it's new and interesting, whether that's here to stay or whether that's going to change back or change into something other else, like uh, another uh, direction. Uh, I don't know, metaverse direction or... Or, uh, augmented reality direction uh, let's see yeah it's a pretty exciting time to to be interested in e-commerce so uh if our listeners want to work with printful where do they go where do they start well first of all i would advise to check out our webpage printful.com uh, you'll also see some uh, uh sign up options so you can just leave your details there and somebody will get in touch with you and uh yeah hopefully we can talk and what about you can we find you on linkedin in case someone wants to chat with you directly yes yes i'm um, uh open open to new follow requests so that Definitely, if something someone wants to talk, uh, whether it's on demand or e-commerce in general or on partnership, more than welcome uh, to find me on LinkedIn. Probably the uh, links can be shared in the yes, details. Yes, we're, so. we're definitely sharing them. So thank you so much for the conversation. It's very insightful. So thanks for coming here. Thanks for having me. 
Thank you for listening to this episode of Ideas Fulfilled by Printful Enterprise. I hope you found it as insightful as I did and that you're now all ready to start your own merchandising line. If you want to work with Printful, then head over to printful.com, register, and get started. And if you want to connect directly to Christophs, we've provided his LinkedIn information in the episode description. And don't forget to tune in for the next episode of Ideas Fulfilled by Printful Enterprise. Oh,